In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this miniature effect using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey, what's up guys, Thrill here back with another video and as you can see, this is the final output. Now come to think of it, miniature tutorial is basically a composition tutorial. So what makes it different from a regular composite? And that is selection of your background photo. So as you can see, we have piano keys and playing cards in the background. And when I put a full size human right next to it, it ends up creating uh, illusion that it's a miniature effect. And after that, I just added some particles and some color correction and color matching and all that stuff. So we will see how to do all of that in this video. So I'm gonna go to file, open, and select the background photo here and open it. Now, first of all, I don't need entire photo. So I'm gonna go and select my crop tool and crop it from a corner. Uh, something like this and as you can see my delete crop pixel is off so I don't delete the image and uh, I think this looks good enough and I'm also gonna crop it a little bit from the bottom so something like this and confirm it so this is ready and now I'm gonna do one color correction for the background and then we will add the model so for the background I'm gonna go and create new adjustment layer and select a selective color in the selective color, I'm gonna go to blacks and here in the blacks, I'm gonna go and put it minus seven. So we have a bit more haziness in the shadow because I'm gonna go and add more contrast and gradient later. So I'm gonna uh, make it a bit lighter right now. So now let's add the model. I'm gonna go to file and this time I'm gonna select place embedded and select my model, place her, confirm it. Now, first of all, we need to remove the background. So I'm going to select my right click uh, quick selection tool and I'm going to make a quick selection and I'm not going to spend too much time doing the details and make sure you are on the plus option here and then do the selection. So I'm going to not go into a lot of details, just basic selection. And as you can see, we need to remove it from here. So this time I'm going to go to minus and then go and remove it. So the basic selection is ready and after that I'm gonna go and apply a layer mask. But now if I zoom in, as you can see the hair they look terrible. So I'm gonna right click here and select select and mask. And here I have my uh, refined edge, oh, sorry, the refined brush tool selected, the second one. And then I'm gonna go and paint on the edge of her hair. And the Photoshop will take care of everything else. So just go and uh, paint on the edges properly. So as you can see, uh, this was the original and this is the after. Looks a lot better, then go and hit OK. Let's zoom out a little bit uh, and I'm gonna make the model smaller. So press Ctrl T, hold your shift key and make her smaller, something like this. I'm gonna go and put her here. So the model is ready and now we need to add two things, reflection and the shadows. So first of all, let's get done with the shadows. So I'm going to select my model and press Ctrl J and this one uh, at the bottom, this will be the shadows. So just double click here and rename it to shadows and we don't need layer mask right now. So right click here and uh, delete the layer mask. We still have the cutout here of the original model. So don't worry about it. So make sure your shadow layer is active and after that in the blend mode, go and change it to multiply. So we have all the shadows here, but we don't need the outside area. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually hide everything and then we will only bring back the contact shadow as you can see here. So to do that, I'm going to go and apply a layer mask on the shadow. But when I apply it, I'm going to go and hold my alt key and option if you are using Apple. So hold your alt key and then apply the layer mask. The data is still there. We just cannot see it. So now I'm going to go and select my brush tool and in the opacity, make sure it's hundred percent right click and the hardness is 0%. After then zoom in and then paint with white color since we want to bring it back. So I'm going to go and paint here and as you can see now we have the shadow that was actually on the real image. You don't have to paint it and of course it will only work if you have a photo shot in a studio but it's a cool trick that I wanted to share and it's pretty old but not a lot of people know about it. So as you can see now if I turn it on and off the difference it makes it is amazing and it also looks realistic since we like took it from the real photo and also if you want to erase something you can change it to black color and then erase whatever the whatever the hell you want and also you can use traditional methods to create shadows we have done that like a lot of time on this channel so i wanted to show something new 
so the shadows are done now let's add the reflection reflection is pretty standard so i'm gonna go and activate the original model and then i'm gonna press ctrl j and this will be the reflection so double click here and select reflection uh, god bless my spellings so the reflection is here and after that i'm gonna go and press ctrl t uh, right click and select flip vertical and then go and put it down like this now as you can see here's the problem the distance between the dress and the leg it's too much so we're gonna use perspective for that and to do that hold your control key and then drag one corner like this and then move it a little bit don't worry if you lose a little bit data it's completely fine uh, once we blend it no one will notice so i'm gonna go and put it down like this and a little bit like this i think this is good enough uh, confirm it and then uh, in the blend mode go and change it to soft light so we have reflection something like this and then put the reflection under your model so it doesn't overlap here and then reduce the opacity until it blends properly we don't need really strong reflection just a little bit something to make her more grounded so i think this looks fine at 30 percent you can keep it whatever you want so the basic composition is ready and now we will do some color correction and i will start with the model i'm gonna go and activate the model then create new adjustment layer and select selective colors and before i do anything i will turn on the clipping mask so turn it on so when i change anything it will only stay on the model so first i'm gonna go to my blacks and in the blacks here i'm gonna go and add six points we need to add a bit more contrast in the shadows i will show you why so after that uh, you can go to your neutrals and here in the blacks go and make it minus 20. So it will help us to match haziness uh, in the shadow here with the shadows of the model and it will blend things better. And after that go to your whites and here in the blacks go and make it plus 20. And that's it. Uh, so if I turn it on and off as you can see now the model blends a lot better with the background. Now we will apply the adjustment layers that affect model and background both. So for that first of all I'm gonna go to adjustment layer and select curves. And the curves I'm gonna go and make the highlights a bit darker but I will keep the shadows right where they are. So we will get this look uh, that will work really nice with the snow particles. Uh, so this looks nice, then go and close it. And after that, I will apply another selective colors that will affect both of the images. So first of all, uh, let's go to yellows and in the yellow, I'm gonna go and make it minus 35. So the keys on piano don't catch too much attention. And after that, I'm gonna go to my blacks and in the blacks in the yellow i'm gonna go and make it make it minus 11. so we have a little bit of blue tint in the shadows and in the black itself i'm gonna go and make it minus 5. looks good then close it now i'm gonna go and apply a gradient on the edges and before you do that make sure your foreground color is black because we will be using foreground to transparent gradient so go to your adjustment layer and select gradient and here in the gradient type uh, foreground to transparent uh, then hit OK and in the style it will be radial, angle will be 90 and reverse it so it's outside and in the scale I'm gonna go and make it 177 and then I will move the gradient a little bit here so the main focus is on the model. Then go and hit OK. After that in the blend mode of the gradient go and change it to soft light and then uh, activate your layer mask here, get a brush tool and make sure you have black color. And make the brush really big uh, like uh, use your bracket keys for that uh, and make it size of the model like this maybe a bit more bigger then do a single click maybe a couple times so now only the edges are darker and not the model and we also have really nice amount of contrast in the image so everything is ready and now we can add the snow particles and for that go to file and then select place embedded select your snow texture place it I'm gonna go and make it a bit bigger so hold your shift key and make it a bit bigger and then move it then confirm it after that go to your blend options here and then select the screen so the black parts are gone and we only have the particles now as you can see the texture is really strong so for that i'm gonna go to my adjustment layer and then select levels and then i will turn on the clipping mask so whatever changes we do will stay on the texture so basically I'm gonna go and bump in more contrast in the midtones, uh, so the texture looks uh, more even, uh, I think 0.74 looks good, then go and close it. Now as you can see in the background image, this portion and this portion both are out of focus, so same thing will happen with snow. So I'm gonna go and activate my snow texture here, then right click and select convert to smart object, 
and after that i'm going to go to filter go to blur gallery and then select tilt shift and in the tilt shift my amount is 22 but it depends on your image for this one 22 was good enough and after that i'm also gonna go and move it a little bit here uh, and then i'm gonna go and uh, also decrease size of this thing so we have very little particles in the focus only the ones near the model so let's go and make it a bit more smaller i think this looks good enough then go and hit ok so as you can see now the snow looks much more realistic and we also need to add a little bit motion in the snow since it's falling from the sky so i'm gonna go and apply another filter so go to filter blur and this time go and select motion blur and in the motion blur my angle is 41 and my distance it's 11 then go and hit ok so if i zoom in and if i press ctrl z as you can see now there is a little bit more motion on the particles looks more realistic so the final effect is ready but because we did a lot of adjustment in selective colors and after that we also added snow texture so there is a lot less contrast in the image to fix that i'm gonna go and apply new adjustment layer and i'm gonna select curves and this curves they will go on top of everything and then i'm gonna go and bring down uh, a little bit more contrast in the shadows somewhere around here and then i will put a dot here so the highlights don't get affected too much so i think this looks good enough then go and close it so the final effect is ready but i think we did a little too much in the tail shift blur so to fix that uh, this is the benefit of using smart objects so i can simply just double click on the blur gallery here uh, the box will come up simply hit ok and here i think uh, i don't want this much fading so i'm gonna go and put it a little bit here and then i'm gonna keep it on the top here and then bring it down slightly here uh, so these particles they are not blurred too much so i think this looks better then go and hit ok so let's press ctrl z and look at the after before so now these particles they are also in focus and they look better so this is the biggest benefit of working with smart objects so that's it and this is the final output and of course you can modify it however you like so I really hope that you guys learned something from this video and if it did hit that like button and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions ask me in comment section below. So till then, goodbye, take care and have some fun with Photoshop.